No problem. Okay, start ready to start here. Yep, we're on Facebook Live. Hi, everybody. I think you should move over a little bit more to the camera. There we go. That's good. Okay. Yeah, this works. And I'll be taking it off mute then. Ah, good evening. I'm Robert Schuler, and I want to welcome you to The Call, which is part of the Robert Schuler Ministries, a church with no walls. Today is the 15th of the month, and uh, it's 6 p.m. Pacific time. So, guess what time it is? Time for The Call. <laughs> Absolutely. Every month we've been doing this for over five years. We've done it from the middle of Lake Powell. We've done it from the Philippines. We've done it from Korea. Uh, we, it doesn't matter where we are. Uh, if it's the 15th of the month, we're going to be on live someplace, somehow, and uh, here we are. We haven't missed yet, and we don't expect to, mi to, to miss. It's on mute. Can you see? The headphones are on mute. I'm assuming everybody can hear us. Hang on just a minute. Let me double check our Facebook. Face Hang on. we got to check the Facebook people. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just continue talking. Um, I'm Donna Schuler, and... Again, this is the 15th of the month, so Robert and I would like to welcome you to this part of our ministry called The Call. <laughs> and it's part of the Robert Schuller Ministries Church with No Walls. Hey, um, Heather, if, can you hear us okay on Facebook Live? I'm assuming you can. Could you uh, please just give us a little note letting us know? It looks like the camera just got covered. There we go. <laughs> if you can just send us a note saying, yes, we can hear you. Otherwise, I can get on. Or anyone else, if you can hear us on Facebook Live. Sorry for those of you that are called in via the uh, telephone service. It's just interesting. Uh, everything's good, Donna. Everything's good. Okay. okay. That's all we wanted to make sure. We okay. are in business. Very good. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, um, anyway, so we're here to join the 15th of every month, and we often have a mid-month uh, guest. We have an encouraging guest, but today we don't have a guest. I am going to interview Robert, and I'm just going to ask him about, we're going to talk a little bit about Vital Living, our new um, uh, project we've been working really hard on through yeah. the Robert Shore Inspiration uh, site, and I'm going to interview my husband. And uh, again, we're here mid to give you mid-month encouragement to lift you up and to help you get through some of the tough things that we all go through in life, and also just to talk to you, connect, and just share a little bit about what's going on in our ministry. So um, later on, we'll be taking some, should we take, are we going to take some questions tonight? I guess if somebody wants to ask questions, we will. You just push star. Well, we're trying to shorten this uh, because we've been doing some studying, among other things, and found that the person's, uh, an average drive time would be 38 minutes, thus um, that's you're supposed to keep a podcast under 38 minutes so that people can get the whole thing if they like to listen on the way to work and oftentimes I believe that's what people do so um, with that I'd like to open with a prayer I dear Heavenly Father thank you so much for this time together thank you that you've allowed Robert and I to do this now for this call for almost five and a half years and we have not missed a 15th of the month in five and a half years. Um, thank you for all the wonderful, beautiful people we've had the privilege of interviewing. Thank you for giving us um, just, I guess, strength and fortitude and um, sometimes courage to keep going on with this because we've been, like Robert said, in some interesting places, Lord, and you know that, and you've been with us every single step of the way. I pray now for people that are watching via Facebook. I pray for people that are listening. I pray that something, maybe just one little nugget is their takeaway tonight and it will help them get through something a situation maybe not a big deal or maybe a huge deal but that they will they will have help getting through whatever it is they need to get through this evening lord and we love you amen amen well this is the season of lent and uh you know my father said that lent is eliminating negative thinking so it stands for let's eliminate negative thinking and um I just love that, and I know a lot of people, a lot of other people have have shared that they love it as well. But um, uh, but this is actually the middle of the season. It began on Ash Wednesday, which this year was on Valentine's Day, and 
uh, it will conclude on on Easter morning when uh, Jesus rises from the grave. He co conquers death, and uh, that is the season of Lent. So one of the reasons my father says let's eliminate negative thinking is because people like to eliminate different things in their lives, and uh, all of that as a as a way to prepare them for Holy Week and uh, Palm Sunday where Christ comes into, triumphantly into Jerusalem and from there he continues his, his ministry teaching, does some of the most amazing teaching in the temple uh, through Holy Week and finally of course is arrested on Monday, Thursday, uh, crucified on Friday, uh, is in the grave on Saturday and Sunday morning he rises from the from the dead. I was going to say you um, we talked a little bit about let's eliminate negative negative thinking and you also challenged people to read through the gospels and you also said think about adding something to your life. So I listen I actually listen to him once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't That's have anything I really wanted to eliminate this year. I thought about it, I prayed about it. But I decided to add something. So what I've been doing for the last few weeks since the very first um, day of Lent, when Lent began on Ash Wednesday, I decided to add something. And what I've added is I added um, my coaching services, my mentoring services, whatever you like to call them. I'm, I, I do a lot of coaching in, um, well, not a lot, but I do coaching in nutrition, body, mind, spirit, uh, coaching and I also help people through some family issues, family dynamics coach is what I call myself. So I decided to make contact with people that I knew I'd spoken to in the past that um, discontinued because they couldn't afford it. And I just decided to put myself out there and coach anybody that wanted to talk to me. So I've got a couple of gals I've been talking to for an hour each week and they keep wanting to give me something. They keep saying, hey, when we get the money, we'll pay you. And if you're listening out there, I'm going to say the same thing. This isn't about money. This is about helping people. And I have been so much more blessed by doing this. Um, one gal I'm helping with some public speaking, coaching, and trying to get break through a fear barrier. And again, it's when we get to use our God-given gifts in this way, it's a real blessing. And I consider that my ministry. So I realize that Robert and I are a team. And when I get to coach these women and whoever it is that needs to talk to me, um, it's part of my ministry. It's part of what I do. And that's who God made me. And all these years, you know, one thing about getting older, you've got a lot more experience. I have a lot more experience. And... I have a lot more wisdom, right? Hopefully, it's uh, you well. Know, you do an like outstanding job of counseling well, and uh, well, mentoring thank you. people, and thank you. And uh, uh, I know you usually are, are paid fairly well, and uh, but uh, for you to be able to do that for people who can't afford mm -hmm. it is just a great. very, very generous thing to do, and I think is a is a very good thing to do. So, so if somebody wants to to use your coaching, um, are you offering that to, to people since you brought it up? Uh, well, sure, if anybody has a situation, just um, you know, a crisis situation they need to be kind of stabilized through. I also am not a licensed uh, counselor per se, so I refer people out. If I know it's without beyond my sphere of, influ of um, education, I refer people out. So this isn't about that. I didn't want to pat myself on the back. I just I wanted to encourage people and say, that this it's not too late. This is a good time to say, hey, I'm going to be a little more, um, um, I guess, focused and, and be a little more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just focused and, and intentional. Intentional about putting myself out there. And I've done that with friends and family and just tried to be, be more intentional with spending time with people, the people that I care about, people that I love. And... Um, you know, Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So it's not just about loving the people that we know really well, like our moms and dads and brothers and sisters and husbands and children and all that stuff. But it's about reaching out to people that are lonely and, and need help. So it's been real a real blessing. So it's just to encourage you to, you know, not necessarily give something up, 
but to go ahead and add something to. Yeah, either give something up or add something yeah, to. Yeah, or both. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> or both. Uh, yeah, exactly, or both, and and uh, so this is the season of Lent, and that's how we started talking about that, and um, so anyway, that's uh, that's the season of Lent, you know. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to to Holy Week. That'll be that'll mark the uh, our one year anniversary of doing Facebook Live on That's Sunday right. mornings. That's right. I started on Palm Sunday uh, a year Here ago, though. and I from there I did um, every day through Holy Week. I did a, a, a message, and then I decided to continue doing it every Sunday morning. And so if you haven't listened to one of the one of the Sunday morning Facebook times. You can do that at eight o'clock Pacific time every Sunday morning, and I don't have any plans of quitting. I plan on continuing the course, stay on the course, and continuing to share the good news in every way I possibly can because that's what that's what I am. I'm an inspiration distributor, and by an inspiration distributor, I simply mean that I want to inspire people. And I will do it any way that I can. As a result of that, I've written several um, best-selling books, a New York Times bestseller among them. Uh, I have, and all of them in some way, shape, or form have something to do with inspiring people, inspiration. And, and so my ministry and my life's work has always been about inspiring people. And that's why we, we have this time together to our our goal is to inspire you to to be all that you can be and to accomplish something more and to overcome the the obstacles that that are in your way so that you can find happiness and joy and peace and goodness. So that's what we're all about. Absolutely. So I'm supposed to be interviewing you, and you kind of gave away a lot of my questions already. That's okay. Oh, I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Do you want to read a scripture? Um, there's a few pulled up for Lent, and I know you'd like to talk about John. And Yeah, I would. What's the the one you used Sunday was nice. The one I used Sunday was was um, Luke 2. Luke 2. Yeah, this past Sunday I, I used Luke 2, which sounds kind of a very interesting. You would think that would be more of a Christmas message because Luke 2 uh, starts off with the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, while Quirinius was governor of Syria, Syria uh, um, a decree went out that all should be taxed, and each went to his, to his hometown to be taxed. And that's the way it starts, with Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem to register, and there she gives birth to Jesus. That's how Luke 2 begins. Luke 2 ends with another story. Basically, Luke 2 is all about the childhood of Jesus from his birth uh, through his education, and uh, the end of Luke two, there's a story about Jesus being in the, going to Jerusalem with his family, and then getting lost. I can't imagine how terrifying that must be to be lost, to lose your child. But they couldn't have been that scared because they were halfway back to Bethlehem before they even realized he was gone, <laughs> which I find kind of interesting. But then you stop and you realize that that he was very close to adulthood he was 12 or 13 years old which means he was at the, he was at the edge of puberty and and adulthood in that day and age was basically defined by puberty and so that's why they wouldn't have been as concerned as you would expect say as if he was a 5 year old but he was in the temple teaching everybody and it concludes uh, with them, with them finding him, and he says, "Where would you have expected me to be? Where else would I be but in my father's house?" Which is a very fascinating thing is that he recognizes himself as 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 the son of God. He's in his father's house. It's, this is the house of God, and here he is recognizing himself as a, in, in his in his adolescence uh, as a child of God. And I think he wants us to know that that we are children of God. And then the very last, then it, the, Luke fifty two concludes with this amazing verse that I just love, and it says that because it transitions from there to basically uh, 
uh, an overview of the next 20 years of Jesus' life. And that overview of the next 20 years of Jesus' life is this. And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in his relationship to God and in his relationship to man. Mm -hmm. So it was wisdom, mind, stature, body, relationship with God, soul, mm -hmm. and relationship with others um, and uh, socially. So, so, so during that next 20 years, Jesus grew dramatically in all areas of life. And I believe that it's imperative for us to grow in all of those areas synchronistically uh, in order for us to be able to actually in, be enhanced the way Jesus was and the way Jesus wants us to be. Because as you say, as you notice, the first word is not knowledge, it's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And wisdom isn't just head knowledge, because we can have all the head knowledge in the world, and if we don't know what to do with it, what good does it do? Wisdom is being able to use that knowledge we have and in order for us to be able to use the knowledge we have, to be able to have wisdom requires us to grow uh, in stature and in our relationship with God and relationship with others. So that's um, that's Luke 2, and that's what I consider um, a, a fabulous time of Lent for us to be able to say, okay, during this 40 days, what can we do? What is the What is the objective of Lent? What is the... What is the goal of Lent? And I think it's th these things. To be a follower of Jesus Christ, which means to grow in wisdom, to grow in stature, to grow in our relationship with God, and to grow with, in, in our relationship with others. As a result of that, that's the way I see uh, and, and, and want to experience uh, Lent this year. Very good. Very good. I like that. Um, so... I want to sort of switch gears here, and um, like I said earlier, we have had many amazing get, uh, guests on, and I just thought tonight, since uh, we're down at our place in Mexico um, on our little boat, and um, as we are usually one once a month, uh, not always on the 15th, but when we are here on the 15th, we are here on our little couch, and... Our kids happen to be here, uh, two of our, our daughter and her husband, Chad, and their two little babies, a one-year-old and a four -year, almost four-year-old um, little boy, Christian and Sienna. So we've had quite the last three, four days. If you could see the cabin in front of me. <laughs> and then this <laughs> afternoon toys everywhere. we had a little flood. Yeah, we had a little so. flood, which isn't always good on a boat, but it had nothing to do with a hole in the boat or anything, but it was a pump that was going off on the deck. and. Oh my gosh, so we have all kinds of stuff. If you could just see around here. But that's not the point. The point is that we're here, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our um, our latest project, which is robertschulerinspiration.com. And we have already, po most of you know that we've already, um, I guess, uh, posted a course, made available a course, 10 Steps for Emotional Healing. And that's for people that... Um, like, would like to use the 23rd Psalm to help them through whatever they're going through. It could be just a regular transition. It could be uh, changing jobs. It could be uh, sending your kids or your grandkids away for a while, off to, off to college. It could be moving. Uh, the 23rd Psalm is um, one that most people know and love. And so my husband wrote a 10-week course, 10 Steps to Emotional Healing. So that's already available on robertschillerinspiration.com but what we're working on now is called Vital Living and it's actually based on a week long in-house program we used to conduct at Rancho Capistrano many many years ago and it's Body, Mind, Spirit, Health so it's a very intense um, sort of a it's still kind of it's still cutting edge and a little bit on the controversial side and basically we talk about how to live healthy and uh, we talk about health care versus managed sickness which managed sickness is if you're already ill and you're managing it to stay alive or to stay balanced so um, I want to ask Robert a little bit about first of all 
Robert Schuler inspiration. You already gave it away that inspiration yeah. is <laughs> yeah. So I did. When did you decide that you were going to be an inspiration distributor? Hey, I was young. Yeah. I don't know whether I was in college or seminary, but clearly before I started my ministry, and um, uh, I cannot remember not uh, being involved with Robert Schuler inspiration, not titled that way but as an inspiration distributor. And that, that, those two words, inspiration distributor, uh, were uh, the, the criteria that things I do in my life have to fit within. If what I'm doing doesn't fit that criteria, then I, I don't do it. It mm -hmm. doesn't make sense for me to do it. And um, as a result of that, I have had some parameters that have helped me throughout my life and have been able, have been a tremendous tool for me to be able to use to to govern and help me make decisions. And what does it mean to inspire? Ah. Cuz because here's the thing. Uh -huh. A lot of people have said, "Oh, he's a motivational speaker." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. There's a big difference between motivating someone uh -huh. and inspiring." So, what is the difference? Uh the word inspire mm -hmm. uh uh Real, literally means to breathe into, to breathe the breath of life into, and so if you if you think of uh, of uh, giving CPR to someone where they used to CPR used to give mouth to mouth where they would literally Please breathe into in CPR. Oh, yeah. Do you still yeah, do that? Yes. And um, <laughs> yes. so I thought they changed that that no. whole thing. No. So so that's the that's the whole idea where you literally breathe into somebody. And it comes, it, and it comes from the very beginning when God made the first man, Adam, and and He breathed the breath of life into Adam, and this lump of clay became human and became real, and that's that's the historical backdrop to that, and it's continued throughout the throughout the life of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and um, so so it is. Uh, it is a, a it is a spiritual word. It is a uh, not necessarily a Christian word, but I think it is. And at the same time, it's a word that that uh, brings life to people. And life, as a result of that, is basically what I talked about earlier, where it, it incorporates wisdom and stature, and relationship with God and relationship to others. Well, I've heard you say before that it's like when God, in the beginning with Adam, that Adam, right, he formed him, right? In a lump of clay. Into a lump of clay, but then he breathed. The breath of life. Did you already say him. that tonight? I did. Oh. I just <laughs> Well, I might have been not paying that. attention. So yes, sorry. I was, okay. at her, I was looking <laughs> at her notes. <laughs> uh, yes, I like that because it makes so much sense. So, you know, when you motivate somebody, you kind of get them to go to the next level. You help them. Um, sort of, what do people say? You changed my life. And I've heard so many people throughout the last 33 years of being married to this man say, you saved my life. I've heard it first through people, you know, used to say that to your dad because the ministry was so huge. And then when Robert and I were uh, heading up the ministry, the large ministry, um, we heard it all the time. Robert heard it all the time. You saved my life. So well, to me, that's an easy way. You changed my life versus you saved my life. And if you have the analogy, if you have the analogy uh, of CPR and giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth mm -hmm. resuscitation, mm -hmm. uh, the person who gives mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is inspiring somebody. And what are they doing? They're Just breathing a, the breath of life. They're breathing the breath them. of life into, right, but they're breathe. saving their they're life. Saving their life. Not right. changing it. No, they're not changing it. They're saving it. Right. Right. So, so it makes sense that that's what would come out of our ministry is people's lives are, are saved. And for three years, my father and I went to all of our supporters on the from the Hour of Power. That would have been in two thousand um, four and five, and we had all of these lunches with people. And without exception, we, my father would ask, is, any, is there anyone here who can raise their hand and say, Your, this ministry saved my life? And always there'd be a few people, not one, 
but a few, like a half a dozen or more, who would raise their hand and say, this ministry saved my life. Uh, to me, it means it inspired them. And um, that's what we've been, that's what I've been doing, that's what you and I have been doing uh, for, for decades now. Well, that's a good um, kind of a transition. I'm skipping over a lot of the questions because I just kind of, kind of again, you sort of talked I, about. No, that's okay. You talked about. It's great. It's great. How I guess the question would be you talked about how when you were at the Hour of Power, for those of, that don't know, the Hour of Power was an internationally televised ministry uh, from a huge big church in Garden Grove, California called the Christ Cathedral. Robert was part of it for more than 30 years, right? And then the senior pastor for over three years, or almost three years. Um, but how did you transition from that to what we do now? Well, you know, my first job at the Christ Cathedral was long before it was the Christ Cathedral. It was actually the Garden Grove Community Church. And when I was about five years old, my job was to run and crawl under my father's <laughs> robe and stick my hand through his pocket slot. And I couldn't see anybody, but I would shake hands. People would, people would see this hand sticking out there and shake my hand. And uh, that's, that's where I started. Uh, it went from there. There it just uh, continued. And um, uh, I went away to, uh, to, to college for four years. But other than that, that was the only time I left uh, the ministry for a while. And that was, that was um, from 72 to 76. And then I continued when I came back. Uh, reading scriptures and prayers in the Sunday morning services and started preaching on Sunday mornings. And um, I started by preaching once a Sunday, then twice, I'm sorry, once a, a year, then twice a year, then three times a year. And by 1980, when I graduated from seminary, I was doing several times a year. And then I started my own ministry in 81, where I preached every single Sunday uh, fifth, well, not every. I would take one Sunday off every year. You would. 50, 50 weeks a year. So how have you gone from this huge ministry to the last eight, really almost nine years? I know, it's been a long time. We had to reinvent ourselves. Exactly. And how do you, what do you do about this huge calling on your heart to inspire people? I guess I could say, like, what are, how do you do that? How do you? How do you make, because people ask this all the time, that's why I'm asking him. How do you go from, from, I'm gonna turn this light on, it's getting really dark in here. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah, good. Yes, I, go, I felt like we had halos around us. <laughs> and we're really oh. not that angelic. Okay, speak uh, for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you, um, so. how do you go from reaching millions of people to reaching thousands? How do you do that? I mean, what is it? What well, is it that it keeps you going? It, it doesn't matter how many as much as it is, are you doing what God's called right. you to do? And so for me, it's more important to, to wake up every morning and say, okay, what, what is it that God wants me to do today? And then I want to go to bed at night when I lay my head in the pillow and I say my prayers. I want to, I want to be able to, I ask myself, not, I don't want to be able to, I do ask <laughs> myself, um, did I do what God wanted me to do today? Mm -hmm. And I want the answer to be, of course, yes, yes. I did. Right. And 99.9% um, .9 of the time I say, yes, I did. And um, I was where God wanted me to be and doing what God wants me to do. And if I live my life that way, I, I can't be concerned with having huge numbers. Uh, I can't be concerned with... with um, um, with th those kind of statistics, I have to be simply concerned with, am I doing what God wants me to do? And is there something more he wants mm -hmm. me to do? If so, well, then what is it? And I'll do that. But having the courage to do what he wants me to do. The challenge with that, that we have doing what we do is try to finance the whole thing. Exactly. So, so that's our biggest challenge. Um, but uh, somehow, some way, God provides... Always. Uh, Every month. <laughs> a, a donation will come along that we didn't expect, and somebody will be in, um, some, something will happen, and uh, somehow we're able to pay the bills. Exactly. Thank God, because it comes from him, and we are That's completely right. dependent upon him. That's we don't right. have salaries. That's right. 
but it's been great. And it is a great life, and it's a great um, ministry we have together, I, I guess. Um, you know, what would you, what, you know, you've been a Christian your whole life. Um, what, what, what has gotten you through your really toughest times? I know there's a couple of really tough things you've gone through. Well, there's a few, but what, <laughs> what scripture or uh. what, you know, people, a lot of people think, oh, well, he's a pastor and he pastored all these people and he grew up in a great, perfect, loving family and he's you know, probably not been through too much. And granted, we, you know, we haven't, we haven't lost a child. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that could have happened to us. Our health isn't, is really, really good. Excellent, I would say. But, um, you know, what, what has gotten you through kind of your darkest, your dark night of the soul, your really trying times? Um, is there a scripture? Is there a hope? Is there a, I mean, how does your, how has your faith made a difference to you? So for me, Psalm 23 has been mm -hmm. the, the, the change as far as me being able to get through those darkest times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember laying in bed, just not being able to sleep, just not, just being completely devastated and I just would sit th sit there, lay in bed, and 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 quote to me myself the twenty third psalm: "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." And um, and I would recite that over and over again: "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." And by that, it's. Uh, some people could misinterpret that and say, oh, you're not supposed to want anything. Mm -hmm. That's not the proper interpretation of I shall not want. The proper interpretation of I shall not want is I shall have no need. Mm -hmm. God will take care of me. And so it's, it's really, really difficult when you don't feel the presence of God to trust in his words and his promises and then I have a whole bunch of other promises that that I held on to, for um, uh, uh, for 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 weeks. And and in our small group, we would in our small groups we would recite these promises of God. Mm -hmm. And I would go back and read those promises of God. Which, um, if you'd like a copy, we can get you a copy. Do we have them posted someplace on our website? They're on um, robertshillerinspiration.com. Very Scripture, good. Scriptures that inspire. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So. Scriptures that inspire. Right. I think they're on yeah. uh, with the first or second video. I forget which. Okay. So, um, well, that's wonderful. Thank you. I would like to take some, uh, a couple of questions. If anybody has any, I'm going to turn on the question and answer. So just push star six. And we're going to be closing pretty quickly here. Because, whoops. Q&A session started. Because um, our kids are going to be coming back from the beach in a minute, and it's going to be loud. <laughs> yeah. Well, loud, loud. <laughs> and and for those of you, would you give them the phone number for them to ask questions? Because oh, unfortunately, if you're on Facebook, you have to, yeah, we can't answer you, to call you in. on Facebook because we can't see it. It's way too little, the writing up there. We're on a, that's a cell phone up there, the camera. Um, so you can call area code 641-715-3800. Six five, and then the code to get in after the lady answers <laughs> is six four two eight four eight, and then the pound sign. So if you're on the call already, if you're because right. you we have, we we have a list of a lot of the people who are mm -hmm. on the call, we do. All you have to do is push star six. Okay, and you can ask a question. I recognize that person. Hello. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi. I just wanted to say that was a good interview. Robert, you answered those questions <laughs> so good, but I remember. So you did a good job. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. So, Thanks, Mom. Love you. And, I'm, and I love you, and I'm keeping up with my Bible reading for Lynch. So. Okay, good. good. Love you. Good. Thanks, good. Mom. There's good. somebody good. else. I'm gonna, thank you, Mom. Good Bye. to hear your voice again. Lana. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say I want to thank you so much for still 
having it so that people can call in and not just go on the computer <laughs> That's right. or whatever. We're going to keep I, it that way. I appreciate way. that so much. <laughs> and I have been a follower for many years. And you have gotten me through so many things. And I'm uh, sorry, I don't mean to get emotional. Mm. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you that um, even in this, I live in a little town and, and they're doing away with the... Mm, we're not going to get the newspaper anymore, not oh. the Miami Herald, not anything. You're going to have to go on your phone mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to read the newspaper, and there's a big rebellion against it. It's just not an old dinosaur like me. So I just want to thank you, and I want to thank you and Robert so much, Donna, for what you guys ha do, continue to do, and keep on doing it because we will. you help so many people. And I love you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. We love you, and we're, com and we're coming to Florida. We're coming to Florida to visit. But don't look for the Miami Herald in our little oh. town. Oh, I'm, so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That is terrible. So we have to go on our phone. And oh. again, but really quickly, I'm sorry, I don't want to take up time, okay. but I just wanted to say I, I just had my grandkids with me, three of them, uh, three of the eight, and they're boys, and they are 11, 15, and 17, soon to be 18, a senior going going to be going to college, and mm. it was just to see them put down their phones um, and just um, be able that we could um, listen to you, read Robert's books, which I have here, <laughs> and every day that was our deal with Graham, that they, we would read a scripture and um, thank you so much anyway <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that thank you that made thank our you. Okay, I love you guys take care thank you we keep love that you call too. going we're going to keep that <laughs> oh, we call are. going we're going to keep absolutely. it going we might there's, add to it actually yeah there's absolutely no reason not to yep oh uh, it's it, I, I look forward to it and 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 every every month and I'll I'll let the next person ask the question thank you love yeah. you guys love thank you, you so thank you. much love bye bye, -bye. bye. So. so, it looks like our kids are, I can see them, that's what I was pointing at, they're out there. Oh, they're out there, our, they're our, trying our, to the come in. The four-year-old's like this, trying, jumping up and down. Would you do the um, honor of the, the closing? And the well, well, let me, just, let me just say that this is a church service, and if you'd like to make a donation to our church service, uh, what you can do is you can go to robertschulerministries.org, and there's a donation button there, and you can do that through PayPal or through any other means you f feel comfortable with. And uh, otherwise, you can, if you want to write, uh, if you want to send a check, our address is Robert Schuler Ministries, two one two eight Bay Point Drive. That's B A Y P O I N T E, uh, Newport Beach, California. Nine two six six zero. That's two one two eight Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California nine two six six zero. And of course, you can go on to um, uh, Robert Schuler Ministries and 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 use the donate donation button. And uh, so your donations keep keep this ministry alive. And so, as long as we have the ability and the breath to do this, we will. And so, again, we want to say thank you for your gifts and your support. Um, and we will answer your um, questions if you've typed them in on Facebook. We will do that later when we hang up and when we post this call, this live call. It'll be posted and also on our podcast. So it will be posted. So um, just go ahead and ask your questions that way. Or you can write to us. You can write Robert at org or Donna at org. So. so with with that, let me give a little benediction. Mm -hmm. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. God Amen. bless you, everybody. He Thank is you for you. Yeah, absolutely he, he is. is. Right. Thank you for uh, joining us during this time. And uh, we'll look forward to next month. What when is it? What what day? April fifteenth. The fifteenth. What time? Six PM Pacific time. Okay. Okay. See you then. Take bye care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye.
Let me go turn Facebook off.